on a scale of one to ten, uh, Bob, what what do you think we end up with? Uh, are, are you down like a lot of people there? They, they think we'll, both sides will be able to save face with like a two, but there are some people that think maybe uh, maybe we're in a position to to be above above five or so. Where are you? You know, I, I think we're seeing the outlines of a deal. And I can imagine a deal that is relatively comprehensive being struck. Uh, a little too early to judge the odds, but it, I think a, a five is not necessarily uh, an inaccurate calculation. I think we have to see what the final deal is. The, the challenge for the U.S. is that the thing that we cite as the most important thing for the U.S. to get, which is fair access for U.S. technology and IP firms into the Chinese market is one of the most, if not the most, difficult thing for the Chinese to give. So I think the juries were out, out until we see whether we can win on that element. I think all the rest can fall into place. But the central core of why we started this investigation is the toughest, and that's the one where the U.S. has to really stick to this uh, to make sure that this fight was worth it and we secure long-term gains. Bob, do you, do, do you think that, if, uh, that China is negotiating in good faith if we do come to, to some agreement where there are concessions? Are there going to be concessions they can do workarounds to, to get around some of these things? Or have they decided, you know what, we want to be long-term participants in, in global trade and we realize we got here this way, but it's no longer uh, it's no longer going to fly, and, and we will actually change some of our, our behavior. What do you think? Well, we've seen over a period of years, including the negotiations on the Bilateral Investment Treaty, that there is a, a real division within China around how much they want to liberalize and how much they want a state-controlled economy. So I don't think that that fundamental decision is going to be resolved in this trade agreement. Uh, and I think we see that China wants to get both. And so what I suspect will happen here is there'll be a deal. Uh, it will add a lot of things that are important to the U.S. It may not deal with the things that are the long-term systemic problems, because those are the ones that China doesn't want to face. And then we'll have to have the right means to verify this. I think we've seen in many deals in the past that China's made commitments, but they haven't lived up to those. And so this is one where the verification process is going to be absolutely essential, as well as the um, ability of the U.S. negotiators, and I have great faith in Ambassador Lighthizer, but the ability of them to hold out for what we really need for a long term, not just sort of a short term uh, public relations event that says we struck a major deal with China. This is going to be a long slog that will go well past the conclusion of these negotiations. Do you uh, applaud President Trump's uh, initial foray in, into this area in terms of, I don't know, do you want to say he started a trade war? Do you, are you in favor of, of what he's done? And, and do you think that for across the aisle for him to ever get any credit, do you think it has to work out well? Or if it blows up, then it's going to be we shouldn't have done it? Or, or was it time, do you just unequivocally say that this was something that he should have taken on? The initial set of um, investigations is absolutely appropriate under U.S. law, and it has been used in a, by a variety of presidents, presidents across a number of countries. What happened in this, though, it's also quite clear, is that the White House exceeded their statutory authority to impose tariffs on a whole series of products that were not related to the underlying statutory authority that they used. So the challenge in this is that China has broken the rules, but the U.S. then broke the rules in terms of how we engaged. And that is something that is going to be a challenge long term. Ultimately, I don't think that's the way any president should take this on. But we are where we are. Now we need to get the best deal that we can, and we need to make sure that China lives up to that deal. And that is something that will take literally years and years and years and years of continued work and continued negotiations to make sure they live up to any promises they make at this at this time. Robert, um, <clears throat> excuse me, um, the Wall Street Journal pointed out yesterday that there are certain industries that we've lost, the United States has lost market share uh, to other countries because of this trade dispute. 
I think the one that they brought up was soybeans and, and how we've lost market share, funny enough, to the, to the Russians, um, uh, ironically. Um, but um, are we going to be able to regain that market share after this, or is that, gonna, or is that market share that's actually lost? It's, it's a cost of, of getting this trade dispute. You know, I, I, I hope we're able to at, at least substantially regain that market share and break down some of the other barriers that China's put in place that's made it hard for us to sell all of our agricultural products in that market. But at the heart of the day, what we are really trying to tackle with is that China wants to use and is using all of its tools to try to promote its domestic industries, to become global champions, and to become innovators in ways that make them more successful over the long term than U.S. companies. That's the whole issue about tax transfer, forced tech transfer, IP theft. That is a fundamental seismic issue because the, where the U.S. succeeds globally is where China wants to win and they are competing unfairly. So at the end of the day, all the rest of these things, I think, will work themselves out. And there may be gains and there may be losses. But the key thing that we're looking at is this is a negotiation that will impact a 5, 10, 15, 20-year horizon. And that's what we need to make sure we keep our eye on the ball with. Um, and all the other short-term issues certainly have economic consequences, but we can't lose sight of why we started this. And in fact, that is the statutory basis on which the president and USTR were willing to start this initiative.